in the swirling mists of ancient Greece, where mortals danced with gods and fate hung heavy in the air, a special breed walked among them the seers. These chosen few, touched by the divine or cursed by the capricious whims of fate, possessed the dreaded power of prophecy. Theirs was a burden both terrible and magnificent, a double-edged sword that could illuminate the path to glory or plunge empires into ruin. High atop Mount Parnassus, veiled in swirling mist, lay the sacred precinct of Delphi. Here, within the womb of the earth, pulsed the lifeblood of prophecy the Oracle of Delphi. Channeling the pronouncements of Apollo, the sun god, resided the Pythia, the Oracle Priestess. Seated above a sacred chasm that emitted intoxicating fumes, the Pythia would enter a trance, becoming a conduit for Apollo's pronouncements. Her cryptic utterances, veiled in metaphor and symbolism, sent shivers down the spines of even the most hardened warriors. A king seeking victory in battle might be met with the pronouncement, a kingdom will be bathed in crimson leaving him to grapple with the chilling ambiguity his own or the enemy's blood would stain the soil. The pronouncements of the oracle, though pronouncements of a god, were a gamble, a dance with fate that could lead to triumph or disaster. Tiresias, the blind seer of Thebes, was a paradox a man who walked in eternal darkness yet possessed a vision far keener than any mortal. Blinded by a jealous goddess for witnessing a divine act, fate, in a cruel twist, bestowed upon him the gift of prophecy and the uncanny ability to understand the language of birds, those creatures who whispered secrets on the wind. His pronouncements, delivered in a voice that resonated with the weight of ages, were pronouncements not to be taken lightly. His most infamous prophecy arose from a squabble between Zeus, the king of gods, and Hera, his formidable wife, over a question both primal and profound which gender derived greater pleasure from love's embrace. Tiresias, siding with Zeus, incurred the wrath of Hera, who plunged him into eternal darkness. Yet, even the gods acknowledged the power of his pronouncements, for Zeus, unable to undo Hera's curse, granted him an extended lifespan as compensation. Melampus, a name whispered with awe throughout Greece, was a seer unlike any other. His prophetic ability stemmed not from divine pronouncements or Olympian curses, but from a peculiar encounter in his youth. Stumbling upon a nest of serpents, he witnessed the brutal slaying of their parents by human hands. Filled with compassion, Melampus cared for the orphaned serpents, an act of kindness that would forever alter his destiny. The grateful serpents, grown to monstrous size, visited him one night as he slept, their forked tongues flickering across his ears. When he awoke, the world had been transformed. He could understand the rustling of leaves, the chatter of birds, the slithering whispers of snakes, the very whispers of the earth itself, carrying the secrets of the future on the wind. This newfound power allowed Melampus to unravel mysteries and avert disasters, his pronouncements saving countless lives. In one legendary tale, imprisoned by a tyrannical king, Melampus used his serpent-given gift to understand the frantic warnings of termites burrowing through the wooden beams of his cell. Heeding their message, he alerted his captors of the impending collapse, saving them from a gruesome demise. The ill-fated city of Troy, destined for fiery oblivion, was not without its own seers. Aesacus, son of King Priam, haunted by visions, saw the flames that would consume his home and the treachery that would bring a foreign army to their gates. His warnings, however, were dismissed as the ravings of a madman. Hellenus, another son of Priam, blessed or cursed with prophetic sight, accurately foretold the fall of Troy, but his pleas for caution fell on deaf ears. Cassandra, Priam's daughter, perhaps the most tragic of all seers, possessed an unwanted gift, the ability to see the future with terrifying clarity. Apollo, the sun god, had bestowed upon her this dreadful power, but in a jealous rage over her rejection of his advances, cursed her pronouncements so that no one would believe them. Her warnings about the dangers lurking within the Trojan horse and the murderous intentions of Clytemnestra, wife of Agamemnon, the leader of the Greek forces, were dismissed as the rantings of a mad woman her prophetic screams echoed unheard through the halls of Troy, a chilling premonition of the horrors to come. The Trojans, blinded by hubris and deaf to the pronouncements of their seers, sealed their own fate. As the Greeks poured out of the belly of the wooden horse, a night of carnage unfolded, fulfilling Cassandra's visions in a horrifying tableau. 
The seers of Greece walked a tightrope between reverence and revulsion. They were revered for their connection to the divine, yet ostracized for their pronouncements of impending doom. Theirs was a thankless task, a burden that often drove them to the fringes of society. The knowledge of the future, a double-edged sword, offered little solace, for they were powerless to alter the inevitable course of fate. Their pronouncements, though dire, served as a stark reminder of the fragility of human existence and the ever-present shadow of destiny. Even after the fall of Troy, the legacy of the seers lived on. Their pronouncements echoed through the ages, a cautionary tale for those who dared to peek behind the veil of time. The Greeks, forever haunted by the ghosts of their unheeded prophecies, approached future oracles with a mix of trepidation and desperate hope. The seers, those harbingers of fate, continued to walk among them, forever bound to the tapestry of myth and legend, forever reminding mortals of the precarious dance between free will and the unyielding grip of destiny.